If you eat healthy and exercise on a regular basis, but you're still not seeing any changes, it may be time to listen to the old mm, gut. It has been talking lately, huh? We all know diet plays a major role in our health, and it's a lot easier to go through the drive through than uh, cooking a homemade meal. But how do you get started on making these healthy changes? Kylie is in Glendale with uh, what to do right now. Good morning. Good morning, guys. We're going to talk all about the foods. We're also going to talk about intermittent fasting. So this is something that's really piqued my interest. This is when you basically don't eat for 12 hours. And so we have Amy Shaw here. She's a doctor, very active on social media. Here's her Instagram page. And she said this is her intermittent fasting made easy. She likes to do this about two to three days a week. And so we've brought her in this morning to talk about why. Why do you think intermittent, I, I'm, I'm even having a hard time <laughs> saying it, but why do you fast? It is a mouthful. <laughs> Why is that a good thing to do? So intermittent fasting is really good for your gut. It's good for inflammation. And you know, we're on a downward spiral in America. Inflammation is causing so many diseases. If, if you don't believe me, look at the rates of allergies, asthma, autoimmune disease, all these gut health related diseases. We need to change something. And so intermittent fasting may be weird. It sounds weird. You know, you're skipping breakfast and you're maybe eating it later in the day, but it really is good for resetting your gut, lowering inflammation. It's good for concentration brain health there's so many benefits it's even shown to extend your lifespan so it's really exciting. we want long lives yeah. and let's talk about some of the foods that are good for the guts because yeah. you know what I did the whole 30 a couple months ago and it really kind of opened up my eyes because I wasn't eating a lot of good stuff yeah. and now I'm kind of implementing some of these things so walk me through what we need to be eating okay so don't be afraid to be weird this is this is a <laughs> theme that I'm telling you you intermittent be, be weird be weird you're gonna do your health a favor skipping breakfast doing the intermittent fasting and then maybe breaking your fast with a probiotic or prebiotic foods so probiotic foods actually have bacteria in them but prebiotic foods are the food for the bacteria so artichokes and um, onions and garlic and then the fermented uh, probiotic foods are like pickles sauerkraut um, apple cider vinegar these are all so beneficial for your gut and for inflammation berries you know bananas I've stopped buying them, yeah. apples. Yeah. Berries are really good, right? Yes. If you're gonna eat fruit, yes. better to go with berries. Exactly, they have a lot of fiber, they're good for your gut, and they have, they're have low sugar content. So that's why I love berries, superfood. Sure. Avocados, tell me about this section here okay. because you've got important stuff. Yeah, so you also want to include healthy fats. And healthy fats, they've gotten a bad rap, as you know. You know, you don't want to be eating fats that are very high cooked oil or things that are processed, but whole fats like avocados and coconut oil and even MCT oil. Have you heard of MCT oil? No. So MCT oil is so coconut oil is about 60 to 65% medium chain triglycerides, why it's called MCT. So if you take the good part of coconut oil, which we think is the lowering of inflammation, the good for gut health um, uh, portion, that's MCT oil. So you can actually get MCT oil that's purified. So that's really a cool way to add some healthy fats to your diet. And that's what, um, I'm not sure if you've heard of Bulletproof Coffee, or yes. people will add it to a salad, and this can really help your gut and your inflammation. So not not only is it good for bloating and weight loss, but it's also good for your risk of disease. I like things that multitask, like healthy, good for weight loss, and um, make you feel good. So before we go, we have a list of five different questions. We're going to put them on your screen now. And these are questions that you say are important for each of us to ask ourselves. Whenever you start a new plan, you always want to make sure you're satisfied after eating. If you're not, that's not a good plan. And how are your sleep habits and energy levels? How do your workouts feel strong? You want to be strong when you work out. Is your mood happy and less anxious than usual? And most importantly, could you keep up this plan long term? Because if you can't keep up any plan long term, it's probably not the right plan for you. We appreciate right. such great advice this morning. Gut health, guys, really important. She also says, you know, if you go out with your friends, don't eat the bread, pass on the bread, try to avoid, again, the red meat, and just make those little changes. I promise you, it does make a difference. I've been trying to be a little bit healthier in the new year, and, you know, in the last three months, I've seen some changes. Nothing drastic. <laughs> I'm not Olivia sat sat well, size never. at all. <laughs> but at least, you know, dropping, you know, a size or two definitely makes you feel better, and you feel a little less bloated, which is always good. Boy, getting rid of the bread, that has to be it's the most so difficult hard. thing, especially when you throw a little butter on there. Oh, and then it's just calling <laughs> your name, isn't it? Oh, pizza, oh, you're back. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thanks, Kylie.